Good morning. Uh, welcome to another uh, video on the iSmile project management series. This is Munir Ajam. Um, yesterday I was exchanging some messages uh, through online social media with a lecturer in project management in a university in Palestine uh, that they have a bachelor degree for project management. And uh, one of the comments that I heard uh, from her is that one of the challenges that the student face, because it's, uh, the program is part of the business school, not part of engineering, is that they have difficulties finding jobs uh, because the common thinking in Palestine and in the Middle East the region or what I would like to call West Asia and even to a lot, some degree in other parts of the world uh, the common thinking is that project management must be related to engineering and is only for engineering and construction project or uh, recently we've been hearing technology as well. Um, of course this comment that she shared with me uh, is, is what we already know. Uh, a lot of groups uh, online, uh, in our, at least in this region, in uh, West Asia, North Africa region, uh, there's still the common thinking, of course it's not everywhere, but the common thinking is that project management is engineer. So even we've seen posts, even somebody submitting a graduation project in engineering, I said, and they are posting that as a project management case, which is in reality is an engineering case. Yeah, it's a project, yeah, but the project, the difference between projects and project management. There are even some magazine here we see in the region that focus on projects, but not on project management. And we need to distinguish the two, because obviously projects uh, are usually depend on the nature, even engineering project, for example, there might be, there is engineering technical architectural aspect or industrial aspect for, or petrochemical or petroleum aspect, depend on the nature of the project. However, the, there is a difference between the technical aspect of the project or what the project type is, or which domain it come from, and project management as a field. Uh, today, uh, project, I've, well, maybe before we can talk about today, let's go back about 30 years ago, or maybe even less, but let's say about 30 years ago. The field of project management, or what we call modern project management, some people call it modern project management, is was what started in the late 50s and 60s in the defense industry which was, and you know, some of it was used informally, even go back to the pyramid days, if we want to go back that far, a few thousand years ago. Um, you know, but in those days, in the old days, I'm talking about, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago, uh, the project management as a domain did not exist, of course. It was more common sense and, and more, you know, you learn in the trenches. Uh, and then in the defense industries in the 40s and 50s, project management as we know it today start to become formalized. We start to see uh, scheduling techniques like aero diagramming methods and precedence diagramming method. We start to see the foundation for earned value management. So we start to see a lot of things. However, in the last 30 years or so, project management start to shift from being engineering focused into other areas in technology, in pharmaceutical industry, in healthcare. And today, you know, maybe the last 10 years or so, project management is everywhere. You know, there isn't probably an organization on earth today that does not use, pro you know, have some kind of projects. The question is, although many organizations do have projects, do they even know what project management is? Unfortunately, they don't. You know, people don't think, for example, project management can be used in municipalities, in NGOs, in nonprofit organization in healthcare, in education, uh, in farming, in marketing. Uh, of course, software development and IT and technology are probably the largest user of project management today. So project management today, the skills of project management can be used anywhere. I came from an industrial background working in petrochemical companies and some of the project managers I have, have met over the years, you know, very few, one of them has come from psychology major. Um, so, what you study, in a way, is probably what we call a technology or engineering or marketing or whatever, 
that might qualify you to be a technical or a functional person on a team. Maybe a subject matter expert in electrical engineering or civil engineering or market research or uh, you know web development. That, these are technical skills. They are not project management. Project management skills today, it, it's applicable everywhere. And what you study before, in theory, is not relevant. In theory. I say that. Because, yes, I mean, if you understand truly how to do proper scheduling, then whether you work on a small project or a mega project, you should know how to do scheduling, in theory. Uh, however, you know, project management, theory is one thing and practice is another. When it comes to practice, yes, of course, a domain expertise would be useful. Like, for example, if you want to work on capital project, a degree in engineering is useful. Is it a must? Absolutely not. Yeah, useful, yes, required, absolutely not. If you want to work on IT project, yeah, IT background is useful, but is not a must. And then some people argue, but Munir, you know, uh, you need to understand the language of the domain. Yeah, sure, you understand, you learn the language. I'll just give you an example. Uh, I'm a civil engineer, and I started my career after I did some engineering work while I was going to college and before my master's. After my master's, I joined the company, Exxon Chemical. And uh, basically, as a civil engineer, our job was to be part of the project management team, an organization that build or expand or upgrade existing chemical plant or build new chemical plants. Of course, in those kind of projects, we need technology expert, we need petroleum expert, petrochemical engineers, uh, chemical engineers, electrical, mechanical. So what do I know about these things? As a civil engineer, I know foundation, I know structure. Yeah, but what do I know about pumps and vessels and compressors and heat exchanger? Nothing. Yeah, in college we may take a subject in those things. So to understand the language, one of the things Exxon did as a company that is highly mature is to help us get some training in courses into discipline. Like for example, some of the courses I've took, chemical engineering for non-chemical engineer. This is one of the course, for example, that Exxon used to offer was, uh, to us was internal resources, or process engineering for non-process engineer or process control engineering for non-process control engineer. Why would we do these courses? Because for me, as a civil engineer, working in a petrochemical company, have to work on projects that include these type of engineering discipline, it would be useful for me to understand the language they have. So when somebody talking about, you know, uh, an air fin versus a uh, shell and tube heat exchanger, forgive me for those who don't understand these things, I had to learn what these things are. Uh, you know, versus between uh, a uh, one type of pumps to another, or what's the difference between a vessel uh, uh, and a tower? Uh, what's the difference between um, uh, a furnace or whatever? I, I don't want to bore you with terminology. However, what I'm saying is that I've learned the terminology. Now, 15 years ago, I left the petro petroleum industry, and I'm working in Sukkad. Um, actually about 12 years ago, working on all type of projects. So I work with people from government, I work with people from the military, I work with people from all industries. And of course, as I work with these people, I learn the languages. Yeah, I mean, obviously we have the, the common language. Like for example, you know, an architectural design and uh, maybe master uh, project that are city related, the, you know, people use master planning as if maybe a phase of a project. In oil and gas, we call that design basis. Uh, in some places we use the term preliminary engineering, in other places we use the term feed. Uh, so yes, the terminology might be different from one place to another, but the basic components are the same. Now, if we go back outside engineering, as we mentioned earlier, project can be used anywhere. You know, even to a degree, for example, a few years ago when Sukad was working on our strategic plan, we actually changed our vision statement to say the project management for all aspects of life. Yeah, and by all we mean everything, including children studying schools, uh, uh, maybe uh, extracurriculum activity in a college and or in high school to help the student learn uh, uh, maybe how to do recycling or maybe a school party or school trip. Again, basically, and we close with this comment: project management is for all aspect of life. And as a mission statement, Sukad mission statement says, project management is an agent of change 
and catalyst for development. So anything you want to change or you want to develop or improve or excel in, project management is there. If your organization deliver a project, whether it's uh, you know upgrading the lights in your village, yeah, or building a nuclear power plant, project management skills are essential. Yeah, uh, marketing, sales, pharmaceuticals, anything. So I hope with this video, this is probably the longest video we recorded so far. Uh, it's uh, to understand that project management is truly for everything and is not limited to engineer. So if you are a hiring manager or if you work in an organization that that deliver a project, you should consider graduates that are not necessarily engineers for your work, even if you work in an engineering organization. Thank you.